right, folks. Welcome to Dragon Works. 1982 Suzuki GS 1100L. Those of you who have been following me for some time know that I get quite a few Suzuki GS 1100s. Sometimes they're L's, sometimes they're E's. Worked on a couple E's. But yeah, so this guy, I do believe he told me that he actually saw one of my videos on YouTube and looked me up and lo and behold, I'm not, you know, about 20, 30 minutes away from him. He was real happy because he had just bought this um, a little while back and it runs and all, but he said it's just something not quite right about it. And he's pretty mechanical himself, but you know, like a lot of people, if you haven't messed with a rack of four carbs, it can be a little intimidating, but it's not so much that you just don't want to make it worse than it is <laughs> if you don't know what you're getting yourself into. So anyway, yeah, we just got to find out. We got to do a little diagnostics here, see how the thing's running and see what we think we could do to improve it. And, and you know me, first I'm going to run it to see what he's talking about. And then the very first thing I'm going to do is guess what? Check the compression. So anyway, without further ado, I'm going to fire this thing up, let it warm up, take it for a little ride, you know, just check this thing out and see see how she's running and then we'll take it from there well I guess it would have helped if I had the camera turned on Okay, we don't want to torture it too much uh, so basically just wanted to see what we got with a cold start now this is the next day from the other clips you saw because I forgot to push record when I did it yesterday <laughs> so today's actually it seems like it's even worse than it was yesterday and I was feathering the choke and the throttle trying to keep it running as smooth as I could because I didn't want to beat up on the thing and you could see how much it was um, giving up a fight well I guess it would have helped if I had the camera turned on <laughs> oh my okay so anyway I did a cold start and it was really grumpy and made a lot of funny noises and <laughs> All 
All right, so anyway, I'm gonna let it warm up a little bit, see how it's running, then we'll talk about it. All right, folks, just got back from a little test ride and it did not take long to discover that the customer is correct. This thing has some issues, most likely the carburetors. Um, it idles a little rough, if you notice. And then from there, all the way to wide open throttle, there is issues um, in mid-range and getting to mid-range. It's kind of lunging and lurching and what have you. And then it, sometimes I cracked it real hard and it just fell on its face before it took off. Wide open throttle was great. It pulled real hard. So most likely, carbs are going to need clean, adjust, synced, what have you. Um, but first things first, you know how it goes. I ain't touching those carbs until I know that this engine is at least up to par or pretty darn close to it. So that's going to be first things first. We're going to do a little compression test here and that's going to start pointing us in the right direction. Okay, guys, number one cylinder, engine warm, throttle wide open. Let's see what kind of compression this thing's got. Alrighty. Looks like just about 140 on that one, number one. All right, cylinder number two, engine warm, throttle wide open. Okay, this one looks to be about 130. Cylinder number three, warmed up, throttle wide open. Okay, let's see where we ended up. Uh, another, looks like 130. And cylinder number four, warmed up, throttle wide open. Oh, gotta get that clutch up, keep forgetting. Yeah, that one was a little bit better. <laughs> Looks like we're back to 140 there, like number one. All right, folks, checking my online manuals here. It says that normal range for this is 128 to like 170 something is the normal range. So we're right on the low side of normal, um, pretty much, especially two of them at 130. All right, guys, so another indication just to confirm it and the customer is also thinking the same thing. We can look at these plugs and they're actually burning a little bit lean. Not super bad, but bad enough. Kind of hard for it to pick it up, but it's kind of, it's more gray than it is brown. All of them are the same. Um, the lighting's making it look a little funny. But yeah, they're a little bit gray, which means we're a little bit restricted on fuel. So we'll get to the bottom of that, but that kind of confirms that the carbs need to have a little bit of attention. All right, folks. So yeah, there's the results of the diagnostics. By the looks of the plugs a little bit lean and the way this thing kind of lurches and what have you and hesitates. Carbs are gonna need a little bit of attention for sure. And there's something up with this clutch. Uh, it's just, Seems like it's more than any adjustment or anything. It's kind of kind of a little bit wonky. 
it's not consistent, that's for sure. So, um, customer did ask me something about it, so he's apparently noticed it as well. He already is figuring on the carbs, but I got to get with him, and then I'll have to go ahead and order some gaskets and stuff for the carbs. Just get some kits for him and what have you, and inspect this clutch and see what's going on. And then when we get all that stuff, then we can get get to work on this thing. And uh, yeah, we'll get it straightened out. We'll do some more videos and then maybe take a video riding it and what have you when it's all done. What do you think? Gorgeous bike though. Um, you know, he did, he did talk to me a little bit about this, but I think he's just going to, now normally, uh, you know, all these are clear coated like the tank, but these are not. So I think somebody might have repainted and just stuck the decal on it one time. So he said he'll probably just take care of that himself then. Um, but yeah, this bike, it's just gorgeous. And he found a 650, the burgundy one for his wife. So they're gonna be riding dual Suzuki GSs. <laughs> it's gonna be really cool. So we're gonna get some information on that. And I think that that bike's gonna end up here later. So maybe uh, we'll talk about all that at another time. Oh, by the way, I'd like to mention, some people already figure this out. Some people don't know, some people don't care. But sometimes I think that, you know, people wonder what the hell is going on. <laughs> so what happens is when I get a new bike in, I have to check the bike out, find out if it needs any parts as soon as possible. That way I can either start the never ending search for parts or I can find the parts easily, get them ordered. And it usually takes about a week, almost a week to get parts in before I can even work on it. So that's why a lot of times I get bikes in and I showcase them and I talk about it and then you don't see them for a while and then they pop back up. Cause meantime, I'm working on other stuff. So I get this bike checked out, I order parts for it and then I get back to the bikes that I'm supposed to be working on. Now what happens many times is I'll start diagnosing it and I'll find the problem and start working on it to get it fixed if I can do that. If not, like I say, then it waits because I've got many bikes right now that are sitting waiting on parts that I can't go further on. So if I focused all my attention just working on one bike, I'd be standing around waiting on parts or an answer or something. So that's why a lot of times you realize I'm working on 10 bikes at one time and that's almost what it takes in order to keep me busy because like I say, I'm usually waiting on a part or an answer or money or something you know but anyway for what it's worth hey guys thanks for watching check back in uh, when i actually get get to working on this thing all right thanks for joining me during diagnostics and peace out